can you just tell us what it's like to be Elon Musk in the control room during a launch when something happens, when there's an issue? Uh, well, it's, uh, I mean, it's extremely nerve-wracking. I mean, it's, the, the thing about rocket launch is that all of your work is distilled into these few minutes, particularly the, the first several seconds around uh, the, the liftoff, because the worst thing that could happen with a rocket in a touch word is uh, if, 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 if you have an engine failure or some, some huge failure right above the launch pad, and the whole thing can come down with about a million pounds of TNT equivalent and destroy the whole launch pad. That would be bad. That's what's going through my mind, in case you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> that's actually what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Um, so when it clears the lightning towers and it's gotten further enough away from uh, not actually destroying the launch pad, then, I, then it's, that's one sort of go down a notch on, on um, you know, uh, the fear and anxiety. And then after first stage separation, that's another one. And when the second stage lights up, so it's sort of you going down um, in intensity a as the rocket is going up. Uh, and the, the thing is that the first three rocket launches that we had failed. Okay, and then the, the first one failed quite close to the launch pad, almost destroyed the launch pad. In fact, I spent that day picking up rocket pieces off the reef, uh, which, is, which sucks. So I think like, there's a pretty powerfully ingrained fear response um, as a result of that, because three in a row, just, you know, and uh, the, the image of those rocket failures kind of going through my mind as I'm seeing the rocket launch. So that's what's going on. And then in this case, um, you made it through the, the stage separation, but then there was an issue with the solar cells. Um, tell me a little bit how you sort of spotted the problem, diagnosed it, what does the team do? I mean, you got there in the end, but um, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, the solar panels were actually okay, but, uh, and the, the rocket launch went, went really well, so that was not a problem. Uh, w where things kind of went awry was after spacecraft separation, we tried to initialize the four thruster pods. So there's, there's four thruster pods with a combined total of 18 engines. And uh, the, the system is designed with a huge amount of redundancy, so it can take all sorts of failures and still complete its mission. That's, that's the whole way it's been made. Um, in fact, it can, it can work with, even if it has only two of the four thruster pods working, you know, it can still com do, do a mission. Um, so three weren't working. Wow. Um, and, uh, that, which was a huge puzzle, like what, why are three not working? Because these things are cross-strapped, so you'd, you'd kind of think that either maybe one wouldn't work, or a, a cross-strapped pair wouldn't work, but not three. It was really, really strange. So, um, so, so we had the spacecraft just going through kind of free drift in space, like they're just tumbling, um, and, and, and which makes it also, also difficult to, to communicate with because the antennas are like pointing you know, every which way you can imagine. So we had, all we had was, was a, a very slight two kilobit, uh, occasional two, two kilobit link that would go in and out. Um, and, and that was an omnidirectional signal beaming off the NASA TDRS satellite system. Um, so in order to actually improve the, the, we first had to improve the bandwidth. So we, we actually asked the Air Force if we could have some of their long range telemetry scanners, can, 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 would, would they give us access? And we have this um, communication system that we call the mega proxy. So we had to uh, recode the mega proxy to go through the Air Force long range dishes to, to blast the, the spacecraft with enough intensity to be able to upload new code uh, to try to fix the problem. And uh, so, so we wrote some new, some new software to um, essentially pressure slam the uh, two of the, 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 the three oxidizer tanks that were um, refusing to pressurize. Um, and it, it turned out, we've, I think we've figured out the problem, which is that there's a, there, there was a, a slight change made to a check valve that was in three of the tanks and not, and not in the other, and we were able, able to replicate that problem on the ground later. Um, and, and we were able to, to, to basically have the, have the system build up pressure upstream then re release that pressure and slam the valve. Um, so we're trying to give it the sort of the spacecraft equivalent of the Heimlich maneuver, yeah. basically. Um, and 
And then we got one of the pods to, that looked like it was making progress. Uh, and uh, we, we didn't want to unfurl the solar panels until we had at least two pods active. So we could, we could go from sort of drifting to, to an active hold. Uh, but then the, the, the temperatures of the solar panels, which are in these protective covers, was dropping. Uh, and it can drop to like almost absolute zero if it's pointing in, at, at uh, dark space. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so it was dropping, 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 and we're like, okay, shit, we better release the solar panels. Um, otherwise, they could literally freeze in place. Um, and so we ran a simulation to see what, w what, would, what would happen. Um, and it was actually slightly beneficial. And it's kind of like when a skater, you know when a skater uh, puts her arms out, yeah. um, it slows down, pull them in, it speeds up. So when actually when the, the arms went out, when the solar panel rays went out, it slowed down the rate of rotation. It actually slightly helped us with um, maintaining communication with the spacecraft. And um, so then we're able to, uh, with, with that pressure slam thing, get, get, a, get a pod uh, active, then a, then, then a third one, and then a fourth one. Then we got all four working, and we're able to c continue the mission Docked with the space station. In fact, the Dragon is currently docked with the space station right now, and um, if, if all goes well, we'll return uh, to Earth in about a week or two.